you doing today? Hey, Billy. It's good to see you. Hey, Mac. I see that we have people strategically placed within the congregation to lead us in praise and worship today. Billy over here, Mac over here, Chad back there, because I know Chad can lift up a joyful noise into the Lord, right? And his wife's going, yeah, it's a noise, it's a noise, it's a noise. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, we're going to sing some, hum some songs that y'all want to sing in a minute, okay? So be thinking about that, some hymns we haven't done in a while, and we'll look, look them up. But let's begin today by singing hymn number 43. Hymn number 43 from the blue hymnal. So we'll sing from the blue and the red, uh, whichever. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Number 43. Let's stand together as we sing, please. Here we go. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race. to the early church and says that every knee shall bow, remain standing, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So in the spirit of worship this morning and with the understanding that we are in some ways crowning Jesus Christ as Lord, would you make welcome to each other, pass the peace of God's love, and share his presence with each other. seated. Let's take a moment and turn to our worship guide. You'll notice within it our bulletin announcement. Please take a moment and mark those announcements that are vital to you and to the life of our church. Manna Team 2 will be serving our manna meal uh, this Wednesday night. Please notice uh, a delightful menu, lasagna, toss salad, breadsticks, and dessert. Friends sharing faith. The Charity Circle is sponsoring this event. Uh, there's still some places available, uh, so we encourage you to come and be a part of that August the 1st and 2nd. Cost is $15 per person. Ladies, we encourage you to sign up for that, and also if you have a friend or neighbor that you feel like would enjoy a time of biblical sharing, a time of fellowship and going together in your walk with Christ and in love for each other, invite them. We encourage you uh, to bring them and to come. Make note, the Lunch Bunch, August the 8th, uh, their trip. Stephen Ministry Group, please know that if you're a part of that, we will not meet July the 14th. 
Uh, we want to encourage you also to remember that tonight, Vacation Bible School begins here at St. Andrews. At 5 o'clock, it will begin for those who are preparing. Uh, we need uh, as many of you that would love to decorate, uh, to come out and be a part of that. We'll be here at 5 o'clock. Uh, from each night, 6 to 8 p.m. through the week, we will have Vacation Bible School. So we encourage you to invite uh, your grandchildren or your children, uh, your next-door neighbor's children, and encourage them to come and celebrate a wonderful time of sharing God's Word, uh, crafts, uh, songs of praise. Uh, we will conclude Vacation Bible School again this year with a trip to the Aquatic Center Friday night. So we encourage uh, you to uh, let everyone know about that. Do you have any other announcements uh, that you would share with us at this time? Amen. Let us now go to the Lord in prayer as we stand. David proclaimed it was good to gather in the house of the Lord. It filled his heart with joy and gladness. And so like David, God, we celebrate another opportunity together in this sacred place to experience your holy presence. We pray that in this moment of worship that you would be glorified and our hearts strengthened, our faith secured. And we pray in Jesus' holy name that as each of us journey to this place of sacred worship, bearing concerns and worries of life, that your Holy Spirit would enter into the heart and mind of each individual, and that you would lift our burdens and continue to form and shape the image of your love and grace within each of us. Receive our worship, Almighty God. We present it in Christ's name. Amen. Now let us profess our faith together. Uh, the Apostles' Creed is recorded in, within our worship guide. If you're not familiar with it, please turn there, uh, and we'll profess our public uh, faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. like to sing this morning. <clears throat> 77 in the Red Methodist hymnal right there. Am I on right here yet, Greg? Thank you. There we go. 77. Ah. Uh -huh. 
When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble In the red hymn of 334. Sweet, sweet spirit. Here we go. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, precious of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. the last stanza. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness. This is my story, this is my song. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I heard 378, was it? 
Okay, we'll go 378 and whatever somebody said over here. 707? Good deal. 378. Does everybody know this? 378. We'll sing the first and the last stanza. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We've been there, when we've been there, 10,000 years, Christ shining at the sun. Seven oh seven. Thank you, Lord. Amazing grace. Seven oh seven, right? Okay, good, good. And above there is a flower in the seed an apple tree.
26? Good. 526. 526. Whoa. Forty-seven, three forty-seven. I need to do this because this request came from the sound booth. And if I don't do it, they'll turn me off. That's right. <laughs> Number three forty-seven. Oh. 
Isn't it a joy to sing songs that connect us with God, that reminds us that we live in this world because of a God who loves us and has chosen out of that great divine love to care for each of us, to assure us that we're not walking alone, and in fact, God is beside us. And through the songs that we've just sang, well, we are reminded once again of how much grace he offers us, how his love is constant, and how we feel the presence of his spirit that always enables us to experience new life. So as we go to God in prayer, in light of all that we uh, have experienced in singing this morning, we pray that you would trust God's presence here to hear your prayer concerns as you share them. Please make your prayer concerns known. Betty England, thank you. Eddie, all right, thank you. Hilda, yes. Okay, thank you. Amen. PJ? Olivia, yes, thank you. Louise Jones, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, thank you. All right, others? Angelo Rossi. All right. Alan Goodwin, others? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Notice inside of each uh, uh, pew, uh, just in front of you, there is a prayer card. And the prayer concerns that you have, we do have a prayer team. Thanks again for reminding us that we'll pray for the entire week for those names and the concerns that you have. All you have to do is record them, drop them in the offering plate, and as the offering is taken up, those will get to their prayer team for the week. So thank you once again for reminding us of that. Other prayer concerns? Let us join our, join our hearts and our faith together as we lift up the concerns brought before the body of Christ. What a joy it is to be in this place of worship. We do sense your presence in this place. The songs that we sing remind us in many ways of our first connection with you, God, and how important that was. How in our time of need and we called out to you, you forgave us of our past, the regrets that we have. You've looked upon them. You've accepted us in our sin and even more, you've washed us and made us whole and clean. We are new in Christ. 
We thank you that through your spirit we experience you each and every day in many ways as one who comforts us in our time of need, as one who anoints our body with healing and we are renewed, as one who mourns with us and even more so gives us a sense of peace and comfort during our grieving time. You are truly present. When it seems the world is filled with chaos and there's no answers, we are encouraged to know that just as Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and the storms raged around them, you too are in our life as the storms rage and the waves billow. We can sense you being a loving and compassionate, caring God. So in all of that, God, we bring our concerns to you and we pray that you would be with each person that we've called to you by name. You know their need even more than we do. And so, God, we pray that your will would be accomplished in their life. And even more so, may your spirit give us understanding and knowledge as to what you are really doing in the world around us, in the lives of our family and friends, and even in our own heart and life. May we recognize your intent and purpose God, we praise you for this church and the people who come and serve you here daily and weekly. Thank you for a sacred place that we'll feel comfortable that we connect with you and our hearts are inspired. May your Holy Spirit continue to be alive in this congregation. And may the body of Christ continue to touch the needs of Coleman County. We ask for your anointing for your strength, for your power, to be the witness of Christ's redeeming love. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue to worship the Lord, as the choir sings, if you know some of these songs, feel free to sing along with us. They're simply vehicles of worship and praise to the Most High.
this time we encourage our children to come forward through to worship with childlike faith with Miss Susan as she shares with you God's word. Well, guys, I have a problem this morning, and I hope that you can help me with it. Do y'all have a garden at home? Do you have some flowers at home? Do you have weeds in them? I got weeds in my flowers at home, and I don't know how to get rid of them. Do you know how? Does anybody have an idea? TJ, how can I get rid of my weeds? I could pull them up, couldn't I? I could use a hoe. Might hurt you back. Yeah. <laughs> they'll grow back. That's okay. They'll grow back. That's true. I could use some weed killer. Have you ever used, has your parents ever used weed killer? That is the preacher's best friend is weed killer. He kills everything in its way, whether it be flower or bush. If there's a weed, whatever's by it's gone. So is the weed killer helping me at all? No, it's just killed all my flowers. Just about every one of them. And the ones that are left have weeds still in them. And we pick them and we pull them and we hoe them. And they come right back up. And I bet everybody that's got gardens, I know Tiffany and Chad were out pulling weeds the other night in their garden because I went by and watched. <laughs> Since I don't have a garden, I just watch. But you know Jesus talked about weeds? And you know where the weeds were he were talking about, that he's talking about? They were in church. Did you know we have weeds in church? Weeds can be a sin. But he was talking about the weeds were the people in his church. They were ugly. They said mean things to people. They tried to hurt people. They didn't believe what God had said. They were just being ugly. And some of the people wanted to pull them up and throw them out. You know what Jesus told them? We can't do that. If we pull the weeds out, then we've just made a worse mess because they, you know, they're not going away anywhere. And he told us if we would just leave the weeds alone and let God take care of them, everything would work out fine. Then we would have a bountiful crop, wouldn't we? We'd have beautiful flowers if we left all the weeds alone. We'd have good tomatoes because nothing would choke them out, would it? No. Let's bow our heads and we'll have our prayer, okay? Oh, I like that, Camden. That's beautiful. Dear Father, we ask that you help us to love one another and leave all the matters of judgment in your hands. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you wait by the door, I think Miss Sharon's going to take us to honeybees this morning. Are you ready? Okay. There are two things that I'm the master of at the house. One is the John Deere tractor, and the second is Roundup. I like Roundup better than I do the tractor. I encourage the ushers, if you would, to come forward and let us give our tithes and offerings to God. Relationships, all of those that belong to us. And 
Take your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 6. We'll begin reading verse 1. And lest we think we're uh, experiencing a trial by fire or trying to keep you out of uh, the torments of hell, it is a little hot in here. We would like maybe if uh, an usher could check on the uh, air condition to see if it's correct. I'm getting the sign that it is broken. All right. Sermon will be short, quick, and to the point. Amen. Some said, oh, me. Yeah, um, that's like music directors, amen. And God's word, verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who are dead to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that 
our old self, was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin. Once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also may consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, the presence of God in this place, breathe upon us your word. May we experience your wisdom, and may your word come to life within our heart and mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're continuing a series of teachings that deals with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God in the world, actively reaching out to a darkened world and a broken people, uh, drawing them into a loving relationship with Christ. And when we think about the Holy Spirit, the church has much to say about our experience with God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, for instance, with your Apostles' Creed, much has been stated about God being the creator of all things, the author of our faith, if you will. When we look at the Apostles' Creed, we know we have an experience of God as our Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, and the one who sustains the universe in which we live. When we have an experience with Jesus Christ through the Apostles' Creed, we know much about Jesus Christ, the meaning of his coming, why he walked upon the earth to reveal God's love and grace to us, to reveal the divine nature of God in all of its multifaceted ways. So when we look at Jesus Christ, we experience Jesus in many ways, through a prophetic teacher, a divine healer, one that uh, had the power and anointing of God through the Holy Spirit to raise people from the dead. When we look at Jesus Christ, we see God at work in the world in such a way that Christ goes to the cross of his own sacrificial self-giving and dies there for you and for me. And so we come up with the theory of atonement. We know a lot about Jesus Christ and his work. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit in the life of the church, and I think even more in the heart of a believer... And in our minds, what do we really know about God's Spirit and the presence of God here in the church and in your life and mine? What is God up to when Jesus proclaims to all of us, he breathed upon the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. What was the Holy Spirit's intent and purpose uh, for the church in, in Acts chapter 2 when we see historically the early church experiencing a powerful wind and tongues of fire landing upon disciples, faithful followers of Christ, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and experienced a freshness of God's power in such a way that they had never experienced the resurrection of Christ before. So when we think about the Holy Spirit, what comes to mind? Well, when we want to look at that today, we really want to start at not only who the Holy Spirit is, but what is the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit at work in the life of the church, in your heart and in mine. And to do that, I want you to take a journey. Do you remember the day you were baptized? Think about that just a moment. We sang songs a little bit ago that remind us of our experience with Christ from a child on up to even now. Do you remember the day that you were baptized? Do you reflect upon that often in your life? What did you feel like when you were baptized? Now, some of you Baptists are here. You really have a, a genuine, powerful experience of baptism. And some of our Methodist family here have that same power of experience of baptism. Uh, I had that experience in a catfish pond in Walker County. I've shared the story many times, and uh, uh, 
two years after that or a year after that, the church went in and bought a baptistry, redid the entire sanctuary and put a baptistry in so that we wouldn't have to be baptized in a catfish pond. We would just be like some Baptist in our community and baptize in a baptistry in the sanctuary of the church. What did you feel like when you were baptized? Relief? A sense of divine connection with God? A sense of peace and purpose and meaning in your life that you've never felt before? How about joy in your heart? It was a good and wonderful thing, right? You really knew that God had forgiven you of your sins in that moment in your life. You had were connected with God in a way that you've never been connected before. God was there with you and you were with God. You were giving your entire all to God. You were baptized into the church, into the kingdom of God. You were accepted by God. You were loved by God. You were forgiven by God. God and the ultimate statement in baptism is that when you rise again you're a new person in Jesus Christ you remember all the teachings you're buried with Christ in baptism and just as Christ died on the cross in baptism the old person that sinful person that you used to be was buried in baptism and like as Christ rose from the grave when you rise from the water or when the water is sprinkled upon you in baptism you become a new being right you know the teachings of the church. Glorious are they that in Christ we are new people. We've been baptized and we've become born again, filled with life, filled with love, filled with power, filled with Jesus Christ in our heart. And from that moment on, we just felt that the whole world needed what we had. You remember? We had some folks in our church uh, going uh, saved one time and experienced the renewal of Jesus Christ in their heart and their life. And they became the best missionaries and evangelists in the whole community. So much so that some of the church members were talking to them and, to them and saying, Hey, you need to calm down just a little bit. Don't take all of this stuff so seriously. Don't get fanatical. It's a joy to be filled with God's presence, to know your sins are forgiven, and the person that you used to be no longer exists, right? But then comes two months down the road, and Paul identifies the problem that you and I face each and every day of our life, that even though we're baptized in the Spirit of God and with water, and we are new cre creations in Christ Jesus, that the old person has died we still have to linger with the human nature that's inside in each and every one of us. There's a part of us that likes to press against God's limits, don't we? There's a part within each of our hearts and minds that pushes against the boundaries that God sets. And we sometimes disobey God with our thoughts, with our words, and with our actions. We don't live a whole heart dedicated to God. And sometimes we just, let's be honest, we hurt our friends. We hurt our family, we say things that we shouldn't, we do things that we know that displeases God and others. It's a constant struggle, isn't it? Paul said it well in his uh, passage of scripture in Romans chapter 6, in the end of this, he says this, or Romans 7, the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing those. O oh, wretched person that I am, who can deliver me from this bondage of sin and death? How can I escape this in my life? It's bringing grief to me and it's bringing pain to me. Because I want to be like Jesus Christ, yet I'm nowhere near where Christ wants me to be. How many of you had that prayer in your heart and your life? I want to be something that God is pleased with and proud of. I want my life to be an example of Christian love. I want my life to be a shining light of God's grace. I want people when they look at me to say, there goes someone that's connected with God. Isn't that in your heart today? But the problem is we know the true self inside. More often than not, we're acquainted with the old person, the person that we feel is not connected with God, in fact, is always prone to doing old habits, bad sins, overcoming, uh, being overcome by temptation, doing things that we shouldn't do. That's a part of human life. That's a part of being a human being. And what's really hard is when we see it not in ourselves, but in other people. We're quick to judge and we're quick to lament over their faults and failures and inability to grow to become like Christ. 
when Christ is looking toward us to look at your own heart and life and say, hey, what's it being like for you to be a Christian following Christ? So the fundamental question we all ask is then, how can we really be like Christ? And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our heart and in our life? Why does the Holy Spirit come? What is the motivation for me to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life and in my heart? Why do I need Him? For many of us, we need the Holy Spirit when things are bad. Let's be honest. When we're down and out and discouraged, we need the Holy Spirit to listen to us in our prayer time to send us a sense of peace and comfort. When we're feeling sorrow for ourselves or when we're discouraged about the way of the, the, the things of the world are happening around us, the way that the world is going, we need the Holy Spirit to be present in our life. When we're grieving and mourning the loss of a friend or loving, we need the Holy Spirit to be present in our life to comfort us. But if we look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit and say that's the only part of the Holy Spirit's purpose in our life, then we're missing a greater ministry of God's presence would you turn with me to Romans 8, 29? And Paul says it this way, that this is one of the reasons the Holy Spirit comes for you and me. And he says it this way, For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So the purpose of God really in your life and mine and the work of God's Spirit in our heart and life is to enable us to become just like Jesus Christ. Now I want to ask you a question, and go with me here just a minute.
throughout the Old and New Testament, people experience God in many ways. And one of the first places they experience God was at an altar. A moment where they experienced something great, something divine, something wonderful taking place in their heart and body. And if there wasn't an altar there, then they were empty hands. But you find a meeting place with God. This morning, we Number 389 in the celebration hymnal. 